Hey, what's going on guys? And in today's video, I'm going to cover exactly how to find your niche for 3D printing as a seller. If you're someone that wants to sell 3D printed products or even sell digital products such as STL files and memberships, then in this video, I'm going to share some insight and lessons that I've learned over the past several years after selling physical and as well as digital products. Now, excuse the mess right behind me. Currently, my house is a war zone. We, I started a physical product business and now I'm basically kind of pressed against a wall to mail and ship out orders, but I still want to commit to making videos and kind of sharing these things even if they don't get thousands of views because truthfully the business aspect of 3d printing isn't as flashy as having a warehouse full of 3d printers realistically it's all about just building products and then printing it and shipping it out and delivering value to your customers and i truly believe that's what 3d printing is all about at, the, at its very core and right now i'm in the process of actually buying another 3d printer here so once i get that printer it's going to be right there and i'm gonna have four but i probably will need a few more afterwards because the amount of orders we're getting it's kind of overwhelming I'm like sweating because it's so hot in my house just from the lights and now that it's summer, kind of late summer, but there's no excuse. And until I can find an office, then, you know, I'd probably be printing at home just for a little while longer. But my whole point with this video is like, if you're a seller and you struggle to figure out what you want to sell, or maybe you're just getting started, starting a business, then you probably already know that if you want to make money with this hobby, that you need to figure out that niche like what is that product that you want to sell and far too often let's just say if you're someone that is just getting started and you want to make money with this hobby like if you've never had a business before i'm going to say this as bluntly and as simple as i can if you've never started a business before if you never worked with people before if you never had to deal with stress sleeping late if you never had to deal with having to fulfill orders as fast as you can if you haven't done any of that stuff don't expect your first business to be a home run. And the thing that I, that I really want to emphasize with this is that far too often, every, there's a lot of people that I speak to that they want to start a business and they want to make money online and quit their job. But far too often, they expect that the first business that they start is like a home run straight out the gate. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's just not going to happen. Like you're, you're, It's so rare for someone to just for their first business to be a super successful hit without having some prior experience, without having some prior knowledge, without having some sort of, you know, background in having a business or starting one, or maybe being around people who are already business minded. Like if you're someone coming as an employee working at a corporate job, and then you're suddenly tasked with starting a business, you're basically expecting yourself to kind of walk up to the batting cage. Let's just say if, like in baseball, right? You're basically expecting yourself to walk up to the pitcher, I guess, if that makes, I don't watch baseball, but you're basically going up to the bat, picking up the bat, and then the pitcher throws the ball at you, and you're expecting to hit a home run, slam it out the gate the very first try. I promise you, you're probably gonna, what's gonna end up happening is that the, someone's gonna throw the ball at you, and it's either gonna, one, hit you in the face, or two, you're gonna miss entirely. And it's so rare that you're gonna hit a home run on the very first try. And the reason why I think this is important is because way too often, people come in, they ask me these sorts of questions where they wanna start a business, or they want to you know, you know, know, sell products, and and they get overwhelmed with trying to make their first product perfect. They get overwhelmed with just trying to get it done right or have it done right the first time. When truthfully, how it really works is that you realistically want to go up to the bat at, at the batting spot, right? And you want to swing and keep trying as many times as you want. So for context, I've actually been making money online since I was like 15 years old. When I first got started, I was creating and uh, selling digital artwork on Redbubble. Redbubble is basically a platform that lets you upload your artwork and they would actually ship like t-shirts, notebooks, uh, I mean stickers, and they would print your artwork on those products and then someone would buy the product and you get like a commission. So the commissions would be anywhere between like 20 to 40% depending on what you set it to. But someone who would spend that money on that product, a t-shirt with your image on it, Redbubble would print it and ship it for you and you just get a commission for your artwork and designs. That's the way they make money and that's the way you make money. And I can tell you when I was uploading artwork, I had to upload like lots of artwork before I had that one piece of artwork that took off and made me like a $1,000 in like six months or so, which honestly, it's not a lot of money. But keep in mind, this was back in like 2013, 14. And I was around 14 or 15 at that time, still in high school. And while everyone else was just talking about Call of Duty, and the newest Modern Warfare that came out, I think like Modern Warfare 3, believe it or not, I was still playing it. But 
I was making money while everyone was just focusing on everything else. I, I'm not expecting other people to be as business minded or want to make money. But my point was like my mindset around around building businesses back then, like I've already had experience selling products online. So making money online at that age was not even like a new concept. But to some people, when I tell people about it, they kind of like look at me funny. Like imagine some telling someone you make money online back in 2005, 2010. It's kind of like a taboo kind of thing. Like you just, you know it's possible, but it's very hard to believe. But nowadays it's pretty obvious and it's kind of, it's honestly believable that you can see someone making tens of thousands of dollars online selling digital products, physical products, doesn't even matter what they sell. But you know the fact that people can make money online now and you wanna figure out a piece of a pie or get a piece of the pie for to that. But I'm here to tell you that regardless of where you are and if you have no experience prior to building a business, you just don't expect that your first business that you start is gonna be a home run. Now, how can you offset the chances of you you know, having a better chance when you go up to the cage and start swinging. Like, how do you actually, even as a complete beginner, how do you as a complete beginner have a better chance of actually getting a home run your first two to three or four swings at the cage, right? How do you do that? Well, there's only a couple of ways to do that. You can either one, you either offset that through experience. So what does experience look like? That actually means you going up to the bat, uh, to the, the, the piece, right? Whatever that looks like and you start swinging, you start businesses, and even if they don't succeed the first try or the first or second try, you keep going up and you try again, you try again, and you don't sit on the sidelines just waiting until it's perfect, until you're ready to start swinging. You actually go up there and you start swinging, and if you fail, that's the experience that you learn from those failures. And then over time, you're just gonna build a collection of failures, and then at, at some point in time, you're gonna get something that works, where you're actually gonna hit a home run. And then once you hit that home run, you're gonna double down on that. But the only only way to actually offset or increase your chances of getting a home run is by through experience. But the thing is, experience is paid through through time. And through time means that you will have to dedicate maybe one to two to three to six months, maybe even a year before you get a home run. And that's the only way to do it without having to spend money or without having to go through, you know, some prior mentorship or anything like that. The second way is to invest in a coach or mentor. So, for example, think of it this way. A couple of years ago, I went to a mastermind in Atlanta, Georgia, and this mastermind was with people who were making 250K a month and selling marketing services. These people were making, you know, 250 grand a month, a million dollars a month. It's like it's like a normal everyday thing for them. Like it's just so normal for them. Like, for example, for most people making 10 grand a month is like mind blowing and life changing. But for them making 250 grand a month is like the bare minimum. It's it's just like the minimum. Like it's just the default. But my point with this is like if you want to have a higher chance of succeeding in business your first few tries if you can position yourself or put yourself in situations or in rooms or around people who will give you a shift in perspective as to how you view money and how you view on making it you're going to quickly realize like money is just a numbers game it's really just numbers on a screen like it goes up and down and that's all it's going to ever do like that's that's all it really is and you quickly realize like it's not really this like something sacred that you hold on to because truthfully you're going to spend it anyway it's something that you keep you use an as an asset and you invest so if you want to have a better chance of success you need to put yourself in a position or around people who are already doing what it is you want to do and naturally these people are going to give you pointers and as well as references or things that you should do in order to increase those odds or chances it's like there's a saying where if like if you are in a friends group friend group of five people and if you're the, like the dumbest one in that friend group you're more likely to become smarter just by hanging around smart people but if you're the smartest one in your friend group and everyone else is dumber than you then you're never going to expand outward than that you're never just going to grow out, out of that right so my point with this is like look if you want to have a better chance of success you need to invest in courses coaches, mentors, you need to find a way to invest in your self education. You cannot do it without getting educated. Like you just can't do it. It's just impossible. You, you, there's no in way you can get you can build a business without educating yourself on what you need to start a business. Now, the last thing I want to mention here, which is probably a big one where most people won't like to hear is like, if if you want to have an even higher chance, like the highest chance of success. So I've already mentioned like, surrounding yourself with people, investing in courses and um, programs, but the highest chance of success is just working with someone one-on-one. -on -one. So for example, if you were to work with Gordon Ramsay and helping you learn how to cook, 
what are the odds that you'd be able to pick up on Gordon Ramsay's skill set as within a week? You'd probably be so close to him. You'd probably be like, you'd probably expedite where if you were to get a regular chef to teach you how to cook, but if you were to get Gordon Ramsay to teach you how to cook, right? You, this chef would get you up here where Gordon Ramsay will get you all the way up here just because working with someone or someone who has done it with more experience or who is where you want to be finding a mentor, finding someone that you can spend money on and say, Hey, look, I'm going to give you money in exchange so I can learn these skill sets that I don't have. That's going to expedite the process even faster than a course, than a community, than, you know, watching YouTube videos. There's only so much information that exists out there. And the only thing after you've watched enough information is to take action. So by having a coach or mentor or whoever to guide you, they're going to keep you accountable to do the work that you need to do. And they're going to expedite that process. So they actually short in the learning curve so what ends up being like where you like for example where you want to be in your business and then where you are right now but getting a mentor is basically just them picking you up and just taking you closer and all that all it is for them to do is really just to get you do the work and that's really what it is and as quickly as it, as simple as it sound you'd be quite surprised how quickly you can actually grow and build a business faster just by having a mentor tell you what to do and what not to do and it sounds so shocking and sounds so crazy and simple but truthfully too many people want to skip this step they don't want to do that they don't want to invest and that's okay but you're going to be paying in other ways especially if you don't want to have a higher chance of success at least if without investing in a course or coach or mentorship. Now, I want to mention, I'm not saying here like you need to, you know, I'm not trying to sell you a mentorship or anything like that, but rather help you understand, look, if you want the highest chance of success, you need to offset that through either three ways, either experience from time, right? Through mistakes and failure, either second from courses, communities, programs, or investing in mentorships. That's like the only ways you can do that. And I can tell you as you go up this ladder, the more expensive it gets, but the more expensive it gets, the faster you're going to see results because you're going to be countable via money. If you were to spend $10,000 in a coach, you're going to be $10,000 invested. Like you have to make that money back. You can buy brute force. You're going to have to. But if you're like invested in a $10 course on how to make money with 3d printing. Like you're only $10 invested compared to the guy who is $10,000 invested with, you know, with all these printers and, and investing in courses and coaches, you know, they're, they're just going to naturally be taking this more seriously compared to the guy who spends 27 to $10 on a, on a small course. And my point with this is like, look, if you want to have a better chance of finding success with this hobby and finding your niche, you're going to have to go up to the bat, swing as often as you can and you're gonna have businesses that fail but then once you get that one business that blows up literally throw gas into the flame as much as you can and just work on it as hard as you can so for example with mountable this is one that had i wouldn't say i would say this one has blown up the most 3d printing school is one business that i have and it's pretty good it's pretty consistent but i would say this new one that i started has blown up for me but i can tell you it has only blown up because of the prior failures and mistakes that I learned over the years and the investments I made in courses, communities, uh, masterminds, I mean, the live events that I've been to. And I can tell you all of the experiences that I've learned over the years. It took me 10 years. I mean, so much time until I got to this point where now it's like, okay, well, I'm now that I have this, this, this opportunity where we've blown up and we've been really successful. Now I'm like, okay, I've actually am more prepared for it because I've already known the skill sets that I need to, to actually be prepared for it. Now I can actually, you know, I'm able to do the work. I'm able to stay up late because I know it's, I've, I've been through here before. I've been through this path before. So I can do it again. I already know what to do and what not to do. And all I have to do is just pour more gas into this flame that I have right now, grow this print farm and the scale as quickly as possible while keeping it as lean as simple and offering limited product options, but still being able to deliver a valuable experience to my customers. So look, my point with this video isn't to tell you like, okay, there's a specific niche that you should pick or choose, but rather help you understand like, if you, can, if you can't figure out your niche, well, do some market research. And then once you figure out some products that you can potentially sell, design it, create it and sell it. And speed is key here. You want to implement this as fast as possible, even if the product is not perfect. For Mantable, our first product, our version one was actually not that great. And I can tell you our version one is kind of, now that I look at my version one, it looks so bad, but I got sales. I got people purchasing this product way before it was even perfect. And my point with this is like, now I have this money, this incentive where I can be like, okay, well, now that I see people that actually want this, I'm gonna make this 10 times better and deliver an even more valuable product so our customers have a much better experience, right? 
my point with this is like, look, don't wait for it to be perfect. Just take action, take initiative. And if you do that and you stay consistent, you'll naturally see success regardless of how many failures you have. I hope this video helps you guys out. If you guys want to learn how to design and print and even sell your own 3D printed products, I'm sharing my process and my journey inside 3D Printing School. And 3D Printing School gives you everything you need from courses, training material, and as well as the community. So if you ever get stuck and you need help around designing, printing, and selling, you can always ask me and other members inside this group. Our group is comprised of different people, everyone from people who are just getting started, people who are learning 3D printing, people who are selling. We even have people making 25 grand a month selling 3D printed products. So if you can do any Anything, truthfully invest in yourself be around people who are doing what it is you want to do and i promise you you'll be 10 times farther ahead compared to everyone else so i hope this video has helped you guys out and i'll see you guys in the next one